job because there's not a lot of money to be made in the food industry um, so I'm broke but I eat creme brulee for breakfast every day I'm probably the skinniest person who also has diabetes um, I don't know if I have diabetes because I'm broke and this is America like poor people don't go to the doctor until we have to and even then we call an uber like $5,000 for a ride to the hospital? Like, what am I, Jeff Bezos? I'll die in the back of this Honda Civic the way George Washington would have wanted. Um, cooking and comedy are very similar. Uh, the pay isn't great, the hours are terrible, and people from high school think you're a fucking loser unless you make it on TV. Um, so you have to love it, and you have to be a little bit crazy. Uh, I'm a little bit crazy. Uh, I guess the term now is neurodivergent. I like that. It makes it sound like I have superpowers. You know? like, with my power of neurodivergence, I can make any conversation deeply uncomfortable for anybody. But uh, do you guys have any of these cool mental illnesses that are going around? Yeah? I think I was dealt a pretty good hand because my mental illnesses are all complimentary. Not complimentary as in free, they're actually very expensive, uh, but they complement each other. Like I have really bad anxiety, but I'm an alcoholic. So my anxiety is like, don't say anything. My alcoholism is like, say everything. Uh, I'm suicidally depressed, but chronically lazy. So anytime I'm like, I should kill myself, I go, you know what, I'll do it tomorrow. Today is not a good day. <laughs> but I want to tell you, if you're ever thinking about killing yourself, my advice is to don't. Because uh, yes, living sucks. Like, we can all agree on that. But it's the only time you get to do stuff. When you think about it, like before you were born, you didn't do jack shit. And you were pretty useless for a while after that. And then after you're dead, you're not gonna do a whole lot. Like, you know, you might jiggle around a little bit if there's an earthquake. Or if you get cremated, you know, one of your stupid asshole grandkids might spill you and you'll ruin the carpet, but that's about it. So when you think about it that way, uh, being depressed is kind of like a superpower because you can do whatever you want. And it's like, how could the outcome be any worse than where you're at right now? Like, just do whatever you want. And by the way, when I say that, I'm not talking about like, uh, like jerking off in public or shooting up a school. I don't know when that became the go-to. Like, um, I just wanted to say, uh, with great depression comes great responsibility. <laughs> That's all I have for you guys. Thank you so much. That was Tim Hoff. All right, on deck we have Alex Orozco, but coming up right now, Amanda Huffman. Hi guys, how are we doing? We're all right? All right, I'm doing pretty well. I got a lot going on. Oh man, I just got a promotion at work. Very excited. Are we good? Are we good? No, we're not. Okay. I'm gonna hold it a little bit away. Okay, cool, we're fine. Uh, I got a promotion at work, I'm very excited. I work at a history museum, which makes a lot of sense for me because I love bringing up the past. You do not wanna date me, oh my God. We will be in a fight. I will bring up something from a year ago, right, Lily? Do you remember that door that you didn't hold for me? He's like, yeah, Amanda, it was a revolving door. 
I, I've been working at this museum for five years, and I finally got the title of curator, uh, which is very Woo! exciting. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's a lot better than what my colleagues used to call me, which was just a bitch. They might still call me that. I don't want to know. What else is going on? I just found out I'm going to be an aunt. Yeah, for the first time, I, my brother came so well. Clap for him. I'm excited. I uh, We found out this week that it's going to be a girl. And there's like a lot of fun first that you could do with a little bit, like a little girl, right? Like I can take her to her first dance recital, her first communion. Like I'm going to take her to buy her first plan B. So it's just going to be like a fun relationship. Actually, probably not. Like, I live in Florida, so, like, I'll probably have to take her on, like, her first abortion road trip. <laughs> Just, like, with her mom. It's gonna be, it's gonna be very fun. Cool. No abortion jokes. All right, we'll move on with that one. What else is going on? I'm dating a guy. He's cool, I guess, if you like men. We, uh, we've been having sex. You guys heard of it? Yeah? And he's, he's asked me, he's like, can you keep your glasses on during? That feels bad. Yeah. Dude, it's, first of all, it's hard to hook up with glasses on. Because as soon as you kiss someone, you just get like smudge prints. Right? It's like, it's like the inside of your car window if you've got a dog. Just snout prints everywhere. Not fun. But he's like, he's, but Amanda, you look better with your glasses on. <laughs> I'm like, you look better when my glasses are off, so. <laughs> we did we did figure out a way to compromise, and now we just keep all of the lights off. He was like, babe, should we get blackout windows or curtains? I was like, you had me a blackout. That sounds perfect. No, he's, he's, a, very, he's a very nice man. Uh, his birthday was a couple of weeks ago. We went out for drinks to celebrate, and uh, he introduced me to a bunch of his friends, which I'd never met. He was like, oh, guys, this is my pseudo-girlfriend. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know vocabulary. He basically said, this is not my girlfriend. I was like, thank you for the pseudo-orgasm you gave me before we left the house. His friends like that one, him not so much. We got, we got in a fight. He's like, we are going to finish this when we get home. I was like, that would be awesome if we could finish that when we got home. The best we gave each other was just a pseudo-apology. What else is gone? I don't know. I just got my IUD replaced. Only the ladies, because only the ladies know. Men, uh, IUD is a, a form of birth control. And I realize men only know exactly what they want to know about birth control, right? I told a guy that I was like, oh, I have an IUD. He's like, oh, I know what that means. And I was like, what? He's like, that means you don't get a period. I was like, fair, right? He's like, and you can't forget to take it, which means I could come in you. I was like, not consensually, buddy. It was, so I went to my gynecologist for like my annual exam. She takes your heart rate, your, like, your blood pressure. While she's doing it, uh, she tells me, yeah, this was last week. She's like, by the way, your IUD expired back in November. She's like, also your heart rate's very high. I was like, yeah, that checks out <laughs> based on what you just told me because I've been taking loads for the last six months. <laughs> I did tell my guy, I was like, hey, uh, I have to get my IUD replaced, it's expired. He's like, come again. I was like, yeah, no, don't. That's the whole thing here. All right, guys, that's my time. I'll see you That was Amanda Hoffman all the way from Tampa, Florida. She mentioned an abortion road trip. That sounds like a killer vacation. All right, we're, we still have a technical difficulties. We apologize. We're going to make sure that doesn't happen again. Chill.
All right, thank you again. Okay, on deck we have Alex TD, but coming up right now we have Alex Orozco! Thanks for having me. Welcome to Bring Your Own Mic Night. We're doing it, y'all. We've got a dog in the audience. I'm not good at naming dogs. So far my track record is uh, Bull Cosby and Kanye Westy. Yeah, hilarious when I got them, right? Until the person turned into a piece of shit. These days I come home, hello Kanye, go fuck yourself, are you hungry? I do train dogs. I trained one dog how to pray. She gets on her hind legs and she does this. And I showed my mom, she's very religious, she's like, Alex, she's not praying, she's begging. You cannot call that praying, it's rude. Like mom, you know you're just begging, right? <laughs> the difference is the dog's gonna get what she wants. <laughs> My sister was really mean growing up, and if you ever bring it up, she's like, oh my God, get over it. How old are you? That was so long ago. So basically, my sister's white people. I'm not gonna do that. White people have been through a lot the past three years. I'm not gonna poke. I, uh, my parents are from Mexico. Not really anymore though, because my dad bought a vacation to Cancun. That's how fucking American we are. Mexicans vacationing in Cancun. There's a Walmart and a Hooters, both of which we visited. I got a little nephew who wants to be a rapper and he's got his headphones and his notebook on the plane and he's like practicing and throwing down. And all these Cancun girls are just like, oh my God, he's adorable. And my brain just goes to, I'm gonna use this child to get to those girls my dad steps in for the kill. My nephew is a rapist. <laughs> I was an altar boy and a boy scout. Those are the two sports they let me play. Because they wanted to protect me. Foreigners, am I right? But today I work as a groomer. That's dogs, not kids. But I don't do any brown or black dogs. You guys like that? It went from pedo to race joke immediately. You didn't even see it turn. I don't know. I, uh, I, I was an altar boy, but nothing bad happened, so we can joke about it. Um, and I, I'm not good at being offended. Everyone's always offended. I really kind of want to know what it feels like. Like, I want to be included, too. And so I picked something, and it was a little out of left field, because my friend said that she's a helicopter parent. And I said, whoa, I'm so fucking offended right now. She's like, why? I'm a Kobe Bryant fan. <laughs> you gotta know what happened. I was doing a comedy contest in Sacramento, California. I did not win, but I did the altar boy jokes, and right after me there was a chick doing Satanist jokes. She didn't win either, but we're at the bar later talking, and she starts to get a little flirty. She's like, hey, I liked your set. She's pretty cool, but I'm just thinking, no, this is your ticket to hell. This is what you're, this is the test. This is the test, but then alcohol was involved and I'm just like, man, it'll be like a biracial porn. You know how much you love them. You type them in all the time. And so we do hook up. We go to the hotel room, and it's just bad. Like, I, I've never stopped anyone from blowing me. Let's just say that. So you know what? I'm all good. It was awkward, but I left, and I got in my car, and I drove straight to church. Not to confess. But if you want your dick sucked, you go see a fucking priest, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys next week. That was Alex Rocco. All right, thank you. All right, coming up next, we have Alex T.D. Hey, everybody, how's it going? I haven't even started yet, but thank you. A vote of confidence. Um, never used to really
to be a wine guy, but I've been drinking a lot of wine recently. It's been pretty cool. I've learned a lot. Like, for one, uh, I'm an alcoholic. And that's about it. Uh, I totally understand why ancient civilizations used to believe that uh, mental health issues and addictions were caused by demons, because I hear them. I'll be two-thirds through a bottle of wine on a Tuesday, and this funny little voice will pop into my head and be like, Unacceptable. We must acquire more. We have but... Oh, that fucks up my throat. <laughs> she gets it. <laughs> All right, forget that. All right, the other day, somebody said that I looked like a uh, racist. Yeah, right? And uh, not like a casually asking your Jewish friend for tax advice kind of racist. Like, <laughs> like, like she thought I was a skinhead. Yeah, like a fucking Nazi. And I'll be honest with you guys, uh, I loved it. I was super stoked because I am Jewish. Yes. Yeah, that's right. And. Um, I mean, I'm half Jewish, but in that moment, I've never been more Jewish in my life. <laughs> like my hair grew back, you guys. Like my credit score got better. You know what I'm saying? This fucking shit son is telling me that I'm a real piece of shit, right? I get to turn around and be like, no, you're the fucking piece of shit. I do look like a racist, though. I don't blame her for that part. It just means that as a Jew that looks like a skinhead, if I ever go to prison, I'm gonna have some decisions to make. Because there is something worse than someone thinking you're a racist. And that's someone thinking you're also a racist. <laughs> there was one time I was at a bar and this guy comes up to me and I knew what I was getting into because he had all the telltale signs. You know, he was bald, he had a beard, he had the Jeffrey Dahmer glasses on, you know. He comes up, he's like, hey, brother. Here we go. And usually I just shut him down, but uh, this time I decided to just see where he would go with it. I started uh, saying things like, you know, you're right. It was Epstein, wasn't it? Hmm, what do that means? And boy, this guy opened up for me like a mountain daisy. You understand? <laughs> At one point I had to be like, whoa, dude, hold on a second. Let me give you a list of words, and you tell me the ones that you do not associate with the Jews, okay? I said, interdimensional, magical vampire, global elite, pedophile cult in space. And the only one that he took out was space. <laughs> that includes vampire, you guys. Like, I, and I realized that this guy thinks that, that my, uh, did I forget to say vampire? Uh, yeah, this guy, I realized this guy thinks that my dad and my uncles and my aunts and my cousins are blood-sucking, magic, interdimensional uh, kid diddlers that rule the world. But they're definitely not from space, right? Like, that's a little bit out there. That's a little bit too far. Okay, all right, not that one, that's fine. Uh, I think we all know that as a society, we don't treat old people very well, right? But it's getting a little ridiculous. I saw this printer van, it's like a transport van for an old folks home called Aging in Place. That hurt my feelings, you guys, <laughs> that, was, that was fucked up. Like at that point, you might as well call it uh, waiting out the clock, you know? At that point, you might as well call it rotten and forgotten. Some of you guys didn't laugh at that. It's not my fault you haven't called your grandma since Christmas. And speaking of which, uh, I'm going to go call my grandma. That's all I got for you. Thanks so much. Let's give it up for Alex TD. A Jewish skinhead. His jokes were a total gas. All right. I'm Jewish. It's okay. I'm, I'm not even half. I'm full. Okay. All right, on deck we have John Banning, but coming up right now we have the very funny Ying Vigilant! Yeah, hello, this room is always amazing to me. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my name is Ying Vigilant, but I do have a challenge. 
Tammy's name. Tammy's last name. But I don't like to tell people, you know, because the last name is uh, F U. Like now is the 
of March. That was Mark. Wow, how long ago? Uh, is it by uh, Christmas, Thanksgiving, when you come home, if you're still 19 year old virgin? Wow. I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, I said, at least I'm going to start calling you beta. Because, uh, you know, the whole high school, he was calling me so arf. I just told me the bus. Uh, you know, uh, all that crap. I'm like, what about bus? Substation. Isn't this nice? You guys are such a such a such an intimate, warm feeling here tonight. I feel it. Thank you, Noah, for doing this. Um, um, I uh, I suffer from stage fright. I was waterboarded during the first Gulf War. My friendlies I don't want to talk about it. Is that PJ down there? What's up, PJ? How you doing? I'm PJ. <laughs> PJ and me take risks. We're risk-taking comedians, and audiences do not reward risk-takers. do not. I had this conversation with Hans Kim when he came into town. He was telling me how much he hates audiences. And I would agree with him. I, uh, it's the internet. The internet will tell you whether or not you're funny. And audiences will not tell you that you're funny. Audiences will reward safe. They constantly reward safe, safe jokes. They're bad. They're bad, PJ. Aren't they? Like if I was in a metal band right now and I was kicking ass, you guys would be like, hell yeah. Every art form, except for stand-up. You guys hate stand comedians. Knock, knock. That's what you want to hear. You want to hear a knock, knock. Damn you. Um, I think uh, I think we don't have enough mass shootings. I think we need more, more mass shootings, to be honest with you. How many, uh, how many people do you just like that you cross paths with? paths with throughout the week, you think just like, okay, we could probably just be dead. Just like 40, 50 people, minimum. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. You know, every time there's a mass shooting too, they're like, oh, this guy's a fucking bad guy. I don't think that's the case. I think they're getting some people. When Bob, Bob shot up the Walmart, he shot fucking... He shot Bill. Bill was molesting his daughter, man. Fucking, he shot up fucking some people that are not supposed to be working in the United States. He shot some illegal immigrants. He shot some fucking dude cheating on his wife. Like, when you really dig deep, he's a fucking hero. He's got a fucking parade for this man. 
If we had a parade every time there was a mass shooting, it'd probably be good for the environment, honestly. Just clearing them out. Just clearing out those fucking shitty McDonald's. Just go through the drive throughs just blow everybody away in the drive through All the drive throughs would just shoot everybody in the drive through You know what I'm saying? Animal cruelty goes down. Carbon emissions go down. Shoot everybody in the drive through I don't know. You know what I'm saying? There's no winners in the drive through <laughs> We need to stop being shocked. Well, we know why we're shocked. You know why we're shocked by mass shootings is because of the gun, the machine gun, right? Or whatever they're using. Like, if we just started choking people in the drive-thru, how about that? How about we just choke people? It's like, oh, you know, I don't know. I think we need to rethink the, the mass shooting. I'm never gonna do it. I don't have the courage to do it. <laughs> okay, my name's John Bennett. thank you. Give it up for John Banning. All right, on deck we have PJ, but coming up right now, his first time here, Aaron Williams. So I just recently found out one of my ex-girlfriends passed away. I had a depression of people. It's kind of makes them laugh. But uh, she drove me crazy. First of all, I, I'm a recovering addict. Got about four years, drug and alcohol free. Uh, so her, anyways, her mom sends me a message and she's clearly still high as fuck. And she tells me like she died of an accidental overdose. Now I've been I've actually watched people overdose and shit. There's no such thing as a fucking accidental overdose. You know the shit is gonna kill you, but you know that it can kill you, and you just choose to use it anyways. It's kind of like kind of like ordering a package knowing that I'm going to leave it on your doorstep and then getting mad at me when it's stolen. <laughs> you know what you're fucking risking, you know? Like, <laughs> depending on where I'm at, I'm not going to order a $2,000 camera knowing it's going to get set on my doorstep or I'll pay the extra money to get a signature. Oh, my God. That's what you guys thought was coming, right? Mailman jokes, right? <laughs> supervisors at my work and stuff, you know, they remind me of, they remind me of a lot of, like, practicing addicts and stuff, like, getting paid money to do nothing from the government. But, uh, I also rap, so, I uh, I just got off tour, we actually ended the year last night, I mean, I worked, like, two blocks down the road, I didn't even know this place was here. And so we ate the drive through a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like, just a lot of, a lot of really crappy food, like you said. A lot of, yeah, it's, it's hard to stay in shape when you're on tour. But I love, I love the open road. Just, it's pretty cool being sober, it really is, it just, uh, there's a lot of people, you know, like especially old guys, it's hard for them to get sober. It's like, like my ex, like she was, she was like 18, I was 37. It's like only in, act, only in like active addiction, like if a guy's in, in his 50s, like he's not stopping anytime soon. It's like I can fuck 20 year olds. Why, why would I stop? Why the fuck would I stop? Anyways, that's all I have. All right, let's give it up for Aaron Williams. Coming up right now, we have PJ. Fucking what's good, guys? Um, I know, I'm like, I give it's a
into an old saying that you know, like if uh, women fake their orgasms or whatever. And I, I, my, I, my, like my question is, is like, if someone can't make you orgasm, why would you like stick around? You know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I, there was a girl that couldn't make me orgasm one time, and I never called her back ever. I never talked to that woman again. I was like, this is pointless. Why would I? Maybe I'm just superficial, you know, I should have stuck with her because she couldn't make me come, you know? Hell yeah. Fuck yeah. All right, guys, no one's on board for that at all. Uh, I'm sober, even though I do ketamine every day, you know? <laughs> you know, if you can take Xanax and do Zoloft and shit, you can and claim that you're sober. I can sniff horse tranquilizers every day and be like, I'm sober too, even though I don't do anything else, you know? All right, hell yeah, not on board for that either. Hell yeah, guys. Uh, you guys ever hear that song uh, by uh, The Police, Every Step You Take, you know? He's like, I'll be watching you. Apparently he wrote that song about his ex-wife. That is sus that we all sung along to that. That is creepy as shit, dude. Yeah, I just imagine staying in his ex-wife's, like, fucking backyard, just fucking, he's like, every step you take, bitch, I'll fucking be watching you every fucking step. All right, hell yeah, not on board for that either. God damn, dude. <laughs> I'm gonna go fucking blow my brains out after this, dude. Fuck, I mean my my nuts, actually. I'm gonna drain my seed. <laughs> ah, I got someone, all right, all right. Um, I was in Capitol Hill. I went to this Greek restaurant. I'm with my Mexican buddy. He starts speaking Spanish to the guy at the cash register at the Greek restaurant. I was like, what the, aren't we in a Greek restaurant? And then like, I realized every dude working in this Greek restaurant is fucking Mexican. That's fucking Capitol Hill for you, where like, the men are women, and the women are men, and the Greeks are fucking Mexican, you know what I mean? Like, uh, what the fuck, you know? And honestly, I was shocked at how good the Greek food was. I honestly think Mexicans cook Greek food better than fucking Greek people, so. Hell oh, yeah, all right, fucking good, fucking blow my brains out, good God, guys. Um, my ex-girlfriend used to get mad when I jerk off, you know? Like, she'd be mad, like, if my load wasn't as big as it was when I got, she'd be like, I knew you beat off. And that girl led to hit me. And I, I should have saw that coming, right? All right, fuck yeah. I like watching weird shit on the internet. We're just going to go into this, dude. You ever watch weird shit on the internet? Dude, I remember one of my favorite things watching when I was younger is this lady would let her dog fuck her. And I just, it was hilarious to me. You know what I mean? Like, I, the dog would look so happy, and she looked pretty satisfied, too. You know what I mean? I wonder if, like, that dog made her come because her boyfriend couldn't, you know? You know what I mean? Imagine walking into that being like, oh, babe, why are you fucking the golden retriever, you know? You guys remember when that dude got fucked to death at Eat'em Claw by a horse? That was awesome, dude. Give it to Eat'em Claw, guys. Dude, I, I'm from Pennsylvania. And when I moved here, my family would call me and be like, oh, if there's a bunch of horse fuckers out there in Washington, isn't there? You guys are a bunch of queers out there. You know what? They probably weren't wrong, you know? All right, guys. Fuck it. I'm going to see if I can get one thing off before I get out of here. Wait, is, um, that, is that queer? Fucking a horse? I don't know. I don't know. He was gay, you know? Was he, a horse? Yeah, it was a man. The man got fucked to death by a horse. He was horse. His, yeah, the penis was so big, it just, like, destroyed the guy's insides. And it wasn't illegal either. But was the horse gay? Uh, I mean, I just, I think the horse was getting his. It doesn't matter. He was, you know. But it was crazy. I don't know if you guys knew that it wasn't illegal for that guy to fuck a horse in Washington. They had to pass legislation to make it illegal to fuck your dog or a horse or whatever the fuck you're into. All right, I'm out of here. That was PJ. No horsing around with him. All right. Uh, on next, we have Alex Campbell, but coming up right now, we have Swastik Bond! It's always fun following PJ, always fun. Oh, that was PJ, by the way. Yeah. Uh, my name is Swastik. That's the German symbol for awesome. Uh, as you can tell from my accent, I uh, live on the east side. Uh, I moved to the U.S. about eight years ago, and um, I like my immigrant ma mindset because you know I'm grateful for things. Because you know people in Seattle they complain about traffic, and I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Because in Seattle you guys drive on the right side of the road, in UK people drive on the left side of the road, in India we drive on what's left of the road. 
Like I was driving a couple of years ago in India and I pulled up Google Maps and it was showing me two hours for 0.5 miles. I know what you guys are wondering, why didn't you just get down and start walking? Uh, don't do that shit in India, because uh, last year alone, 300,000 people died in road accidents. That's a heck lot more than victims of gun violence in the US. Which gave me a creative idea. Like, how about we take all the guns from the US and give to people stuck in traffic in India? <laughs> And we take all the spicy food from India and give it to people who are against abortion in the US so they know what it feels like to have something unwanted in the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, she likes it, yeah. Speaking of uh, food, I think the amount of research that happens in this country about food is like off the rails. It's not even like help, helpful shit, it's not like why are people trying to extract milk from every possible nut in this country? Like, why? <laughs> and you know, when, when scientists and researchers use the word uh, impossible, I thought they cured cancer. No, they were just talking about burgers. That's all they were talking about. And, and this is where we are at, at right now. Like, the people are inventing apps that tell you when the fuck to stop eating. Because guess what's not? Exploding diarrhea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, um, I'm on the dating apps because I hate myself. I've actually been on dating apps for four years. That means I have a bachelor's degree in dating apps. That's what it means. And here's my summary of it. Uh, it's like dating apps are like shopping for clothes at a thrift store. Like you have to like sift through piles and piles of garbage until you find that one thing you might want to take home with you. But you're scared, what if it ends up giving you a rash? <laughs> There's an alternative though um, to online dating apps. It's called Arrange Managers. Do you guys know what that is? It's like um, a dating intervention by your parents. That's what, that's what uh, Arrange Managers are. Yeah. Uh, okay, let me make it more relatable. It's like what you guys did when you elected Joe Biden. Because come on, that was not plan A ever. No, 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 no. Uh, there is, uh, arranged managers are actually 90% reliable. Like that's the, uh, the success rate. Which is kind of amazing, right? But there is uh, one more similarity between arranged managers and Joe Biden. They have the same emotional spectrum. At its best, it's relief. And at its worst, it's embarrassment. That's what it is. You guys have been lovely. Let's get up and squash Dick Bot. On deck could be our last comedian, Adam Tiller, but coming up right now, we have Alex Kimball. Definitely witches, you know. You're like, that's a fucking. Like, there's a cauldron, and there's fucking, you know, brewing up <coughs> spells and shit. And then, like, in 2020, we're just like, I was just some gossipy gals, you know. I was just a bunch of like gossip going around camp. And uh, you know, now it's like uh, totally different outlook on it. So uh, I got a buddy saying that uh, he's got. Uh, him and his girlfriend have sex like two or three times a month. And, uh, and I was like, uh, he's saying he's like, he has to jerk off at work now. And I was like, that's kind of, uh, no, it's like, yeah, I gotta support him. You know, so you gotta get one out on the weekend. And uh, I was like, but having a girlfriend at home and knowing that you can have sex is like biking to work when there's a Corvette in the garage. Like, I really wanna take this for a ride, but I fucking can't. Yeah, that's that's it for me, you guys. 
talking to this girl, I started dating this girl recently, and we got on the topic of uh, body count. Not like murder, but like it's like how many people you slept with or whatever. And we were talking and like I don't like I, I asked her, like, do you know how many people you've been with? She's like, no. But I, it's on my, like I have a list on my phone. <laughs> and I'm like, that's the same thing or whatever. She's like, do you know how many people been with? And I'm like, yeah, I have a spreadsheet. <laughs> there were like different tabs on it for like dick stuff, <laughs> mouth stuff, and thinkies, right? Like, <laughs> and I just, after I hook up with somebody, I send it to them. Be like, hey, can you put in your information? <laughs> just trying to keep good records or whatever. <laughs> but we were talking like triple digits, that's a lot, right? I know we're in a sex-positive city, but like, it feels like a lot. But like, she was saying she's in double digits, I'm in double digits. And I, I was like, okay, that's not that bad. But then I thought about it, like, that's, that means she's been with either 10 to 99 dicks and vaginas, you know? Or like, whatever, like, double that would be like 172 balls, too, or whatever. Like, it's... Assuming they all have two, right? <laughs> so people, that's a that's a lot, you know. It's a lot, and uh, I'm not. I can't really judge, you know. Like I, I looked at my spreadsheet, and you know, like there at one point, like I I just wasn't great with names, so I just started putting in what I did. The information I had, it was just like shitty Vegas hotel and like McDonald's bathroom and shit. <laughs> It's like there's a place in my heart for that person. Just not like a big enough place for me to remember their full name. <laughs> I'm a big basketball fan. Did anybody watch the game tonight? Cool. <laughs> oh, such a giving audience. No, I, I was watching this documentary about Kobe Bryant the other day. And uh, he's a basketball player, if you don't know. <laughs> he's not with us anymore, but... And I'm not going to make a joke about the helicopter thing. I don't think there's anything funny about that. But I, I guess, like, back in high school, Kobe Bryant, he used to practice playing basketball without a ball. You guys heard of this? He'd go in the gym and he'd, like, practice, like, shooting and practice passing and, like, practice not having any friends. <laughs> Which is pretty impressive, though, that he practiced that much, considering he had success. Like, that story changes 
tremendously if he was a failure. Right? Then it turns into the, hey, do you guys remember that dipshit Kobe from high school who used to play basketball without a ball? Like, how did we not know he was special needs? That's got to be where he came up with that whole, that saying where he would like be like, Kobe, it's like he was alone. You know, he needed encouragement from somebody. He cheered himself on. That's for sure why he was such a ball hog. Right? It's like as soon as he got a ball, he's like, I'm not sharing this with anybody. Fuck you guys. I want to do a version of like air activities like that. Like go to a park without a dog. <laughs> you just have like a fucking leash behind me dragging or whatever. Just get to my spot with a ball. I'm just like, you know, fucking just like throw it. Just be like, go, cinnamon. I mean, I'm going to have to bring a few balls. I'm not going to chase after each one. Eventually, somebody's going to call the cops. They're not going to do anything because I'm white. <laughs> I thought that dog was going to start running for a second. When I, when I, looked <laughs> I even know it was there. I, uh, I watch a lot of TV. Uh, do you guys know what that is? <laughs> You're familiar with the concept? I've been watching this thing on Netflix alone. It's called Alone. I watch it by myself. Anybody here seen it? You seen it? I've seen it. It's a it's a weird show, right? It's pretty weird. Yeah, they send like ten people out into the woods to see if they can survive for like a hundred days. Yeah. And like half the people on the show don't seem to understand the significance of what they're doing. <laughs> like one guy he goes out there, he spends the first three days like making a guitar. <laughs> yeah, and then two days later, he's like, I'm extremely hungry right now. <laughs> if I was in the show, I know what I would do. As soon as I got there, I would hunt and eat the other contestants. <laughs> the guitar guy would be delicious, right? <laughs> Tastes wonderful. <laughs> like barbecue, however you make them. And it would be easy to like lure them in too, you know? Just get them to come close. Just like if I just like built a drum and he would come close. He wouldn't be able to resist. I'd look at him and be like, hey man, let's, let's start an indie band together. We'll play at Stump Station or whatever the fuck this place is. And then I would kill him. I don't, I don't know how I'd kill him. I don't like thinking about that part. I do know, though, I would be the first person in the history of that show to leave fatter <laughs> than when I got there, right? Like, they'd do an exit interview of me. Come up to me, like, hey, what did you think of this experience? I'd just be sitting there, like, all fat. Like, this was delicious. I would love to do this again sometime. And the producer would be like, you ate nine people. Get the fuck out of here. I don't know. I've been dealing with something recently. I don't I don't know. I don't really like it. Um, older white people keep coming up to me and saying racist shit to me. Yeah, I know my haircut's not helping right now, but like, <laughs> like the other day this this older white woman she came up to me and she's like, you know, there's a lot of brown people on the east side of Seattle. Yeah, she's not wrong, but like, I'm not gonna be the person to educate this lady and what she can and can't say. So I've been doing something different, what I like to call one-up her racism, where she's like, you know, there's a lot of brown people on the east side of Seattle. And I look at her and I say, we need to do something about this. <laughs> And then if she doesn't get that I'm fucking with her, I slide in a quick white power. <laughs> and honestly, it works pretty well, it does. But I'm worried the wrong person's gonna come around and hear that and come up to me and be like, you know, there's a group of people I would love for you to meet. We're up in Arlington, we meet at midnight every Wednesday. Come on, we gotta go burn some shit, let's go. The joke was a little too dark for some of you. <laughs> 
or too white. I don't know. It's <laughs> one of the two. Let's see if I can get anything quick to end on. I, I don't know. I, I'm not from here. I got a different sense of humor. Like where I grew up, people. I grew up in the Midwest, and people would say "gay" constantly. Not like literally. They were like "gay, gay, 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 gay." Like they, they would just say it all the time or whatever. And like. When I moved to Seattle, I found out you're not supposed to say that, because it like upsets white people. <laughs> and then they get on the internet and they start talking amongst each other. They love the internet, but like the way I found out you're not supposed to say gay was from that Macklemore song, "Same Love." Yeah, which means that the reason why I stopped saying gay was because of Macklemore, yeah, which is pretty gay. Like, that might be more gay than sucking a dick, to be honest, like, I am, I am a queer person, like, I don't really talk about it on stage because I think that's a little gay, but like, it's a weird joke, right? It works, but it feels like it shouldn't. I don't know, I just don't understand why so many people have to be gay about being gay. It's like, you're gay, that's great, that's cool. Like, be gay, that's fucking awesome. And there's a lot of people, like, in comedy, too, where they conflate, like, being gay with being funny. And those two things are not the same. Like, being gay doesn't mean that you're funny. If being gay meant you were funny, San Francisco would be the funniest place in the world. But it's not. It's just a place where people poop outside. Which is pretty funny. But, all right, you guys have been a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Give it over, Noah. Give it up again for Adam Tiller! Yeah! He made a joke about like, looking like a racist, and then he talked about like eating other people. He kind of looks like Campbell, too. <laughs> Just kidding. All right! Uh, he talk about airplane cancer or AIDS. <laughs> and, it, and it said, don't, it said, it said, see, so talk about a cancer and a plane and AIDS. So, I. I don't, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to have to figure this one out because I only have his divorce stories, which I don't know. Maybe that's something relatable to cancer. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> one for cancer and divorce. And I guess, like, like, divorce is terrible, but, you know, like, I guess I could have. Okay. Uh, other stuff. I don't know. I don't know. Yes, Jewish. Oh, here. Here. Um, uh, do you know anybody? Any, well, first, anybody here married? Okay. Anybody here divorced? Who was that? Okay. Oh wow. I'm just saying wow because you're. How old are you? Oh okay. You look young. That's why. I was like, man, you got okay. Uh, anybody here a parent? Okay. Anybody here a step parent? Okay. All right. Well, here's the thing. Anybody know that the new like what like they've changed the term from step parent? Do you know what it is? It's bonus parent. Non-binary. They call it a bonus parent, you know, so like the kids don't have to feel like as bad about it. So you know, if I get remarried, like the kids will have a bonus mom, and when they go back to their other home, they'll go to their ordinary mom. So that got me thinking too, you know, like so this is the mom that I get to see regularly. He's our first official feature. We do this once a month. Uh, let's get on with it. Uh, thank you folks again for coming out. Woo! Yeah. All right. Woo. On deck, we have Veradeth. Oh, one more thing. I will be lighting you from the back over there with a red light. Four minute set, so I'll let you have three minutes. Got it? All right. Yeah. All right, on deck, we have Veradeth. But coming up right now, we have the very funny Joe Nelson. <laughs> Substation, how are we doing tonight? Yeah. I'm just gonna put that somewhere where I probably can't see it. Hey, uh, life's been going really great for me lately. I got married this year. Yeah, yeah fuck yeah. I've been with this lady now for 10 years. Yeah, wow, right? It doesn't happen anymore. Yeah, ten, she's the best, I gotta tell you. 10 years of so much love, all that. But I'm not gonna lie to you guys. After 10 years, things start getting a little stale in the bedroom, if you know what I mean. So I've been trying a few new things out. The most popular so far is I've been faking my own orgasms. 
Yeah, I don't know if it's the Dungeon and Dragon player me, but I feel like it's so much more fun when everyone's pretending together. Like, if she's gonna do it, I might as well do it. But it's really unfair. Like, she's been doing it for 10 years now. I just got in the game. I feel like if Mike Tyson were to fight a 12 year old, we knew he's gonna win that battle, right? Yeah, now that I'm a married man, uh, I feel like it's time I start dressing a little bit better, dressing a little more age appropriately. Which is a joke, works a lot more when I'm in sweats, but uh, yeah, the other day I was going underwear shopping at the local Goodwill, and I saw a man from a really jacked up lake trying to donate up his clothes. Yeah, I'm not trying to sound like an asshole or anything, but I really don't think that guy should be allowed to pass off his jeans. Yeah. Uh, shortly after Albert Hoffman synthesized LSD, here's a little history lesson for you. The CIA started experimenting on their co-workers by putting acid in their coffee and observing their erratic behavior. Ah, God, I sure wish my co-workers were that cool. <laughs> um, all right, here's a, has anybody ever heard this lame joke? There's no such thing as a lesbian. There's only women who haven't got this D yet, right? <laughs> Everyone's heard that lame shit, right? But I wonder if there's the inverse. Uh, maybe the women can answer this. Is there any like alpha female here? They just have that magic pussy, like, there's no such thing as a gay dude, they just haven't got this yet. Yeah, yeah do, you got that, do you got that conversion therapy pussy? I do. Yeah. Yeah, like, you don't, you don't even need electro thought shock therapy, like, this pussy just electrifying. You could put a rainbow in here, and I'll just shoot out gamma rays. It's like a giant gay eating pussy portal. I wanted that joke to work so much more. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm a dad, uh, officially, it's been about two months now. Yeah, so, yeah, so I've been experimenting with uh, dad jokes. You guys wanna hear a couple? Share yeah, with your family if you feel yeah, like it. Yeah. Um, did you ever hear the story of the snitch? Uh, no answer, it's fine. Uh, it's a really great tattletale, yeah, let me tell you. Uh, why was the band Nickelback never allowed to perform in a football arena? They only allow quarterbacks, those bastards. All right, last clean dad joke, so I'll move on. Uh, what do you get when a chicken eats a firework? You get my cock exploding. <laughs> We're pretty close there, pretty close. Two out of three ain't bad. Yeah, um, all right, actually, no, I like this dad joke. One more, just kidding. Um, I heard about this dad. He beat a man to death for eight hours straight with a super blunt object. Ladies, don't you think when a man doesn't know how to get to the point? <laughs> Uh, was I flash it? Oh, perfect. I'm not sure if you guys can tell by the looks of me, but I am really into porn. Yeah, I did think. Um, yeah, I don't know what it is. Porn's the best, right? Porn's the bees knees. It's all the parts of the bees. Like, I never thought I'd actually say this, but I finally found a porno type I don't like. ASMR porn. You know that whisper stuff. Oh, I can't do it, yeah. It's like the most you might ever get, like the guy could slam a girl against the wall, flip her upside down, do a reverse text in, a flying squirrel, you know all the old school stuff. And the most of my ever is, you like it, you like it, yeah, yeah, take it, take it, give it to me, I give it to me. Ah, oh, man, I can't do it. Like, if I want to see a guy get maximum effort, you don't really give it everything you got, the woman not make a beat, well, then I just have sex with my wife, right? Like, where's the adventure? And you guys, don't even get me started on the orgies. The orgies are the absolute worst. Picture for me, if you will, close your eyes to the after you, a room full of people all trying to fuck each other without a single noise. Well, that's easy for me to picture. I just have my dad's wool review. <laughs> All right, that's my time. Thank you, guys. Give it up for Joe Nelson. He said the word there, pussy. It sounds like a pretty interesting new Bond character. All right. <laughs> On deck, we have Peter Hartman. But coming up right now, we have Verda. <laughs> keep it going for Joe, everybody. Come on, keep it going. Yeah. Um, I was using that new uh, AI software. Like really welcoming, safe, um, queer friendly. It's called Chat LGBT. <laughs> you guys enjoy using it? Um, so I grew up in Bellevue, the suburbs. I had a friend named Chad. I think he's white. And <laughs> something I noticed growing up with Chad was the way his parents disciplined him was hella soft. Compared to my Southeast Asian parents, I once saw this guy steal his dad's car, and all his parents said to him was like, "Chad, we're we're glad you're alive, and you know nobody got hurt. Well, I'm sure this is a learning lesson. Let's get you a new Subaru." Once 
I came home late from school. My mom said to me, Bakani Iki Lai, which means I should uppercut you in the mouth and rip out your spinal cord. <laughs> my mom sub zero for Mortal Kombat. <laughs> it was my fatality. So I did something really responsible. Today I'm celebrating eight months of sobriety. Yeah. <laughs> You know what's weird about giving up an addiction? You're gonna develop other addictions. <laughs> Ever since I gave up alcohol, I've been hooked on the internet. So I thought to myself, if there's support groups for alcoholics and drug addicts, there's gotta be something for internet users. So I found a group called Internet Addicts Anonymous, but the only meeting they have is on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's like going to an AA meeting at a local bar during happy hour on Cinco de Mayo. It ain't the spot. So I log into the Zoom meeting, and the first thing you have to do is share how many days it's been since you last used. Um, so I raise my digital hand. I'm like, uh, I think we all have zero days because we're using right now. And then all of a sudden, I get kicked out of the meeting. I log back on, come to find out the meeting host had a bad internet connection. It's like, come on, dude, you're an internet addict. Buy that good shit. We've got like good lead Wi-Fi. The meeting eventually ends, and I get a sponsor. But he's hard to get a hold of. He doesn't have This might go off. Okay. Uh, and you know what? Honestly, though, I've done a lot of support groups. I've been to Debtors Anonymous for my spending. I went to Sex and Love Anonymous for codependency. I've been to AA for my alcoholism. I'm in a support group now for people addicted to support groups. <laughs> it's called Support Group Anonymous. The meetings are great. There's no 12 steps. They're really effective because everyone avoids you. My name is Veridef. You guys have been amazing. Thank you so much. Let's give it up for Veridef. All right. On deck, we have Bruce DeTore, but coming up right now, we have Peter Artman! Yes, thank you. I deserve all that. Hello. I love this setup. I love this setup. Oh my god. All this furniture here. It's like a fucked up casting couch. I used to sell furniture too, so it's kind of like weird. You know what's weird for me is like when I, I, sell, I sell furniture, and it's weird when I'm watching porn and I see like the same sofa I sell. <laughs> it's weird too, because like there is this sad, like so I used to work at Ashley Furniture, there's this ghetto ass bucket sofa, it's called the Darcy sofa. $200, I see it in all the shitty porns. And for me, like I have a bond with that in a bad way where I'm like, I just can't even masturbate to it anymore. It just gets sad for me. I'm just like, dude, we need to start this show GoFundMe. Like this is a low budget, I just feel bad. I just want to say that. Um, yeah, but uh, I do. I do sell furniture. I sell uh, a lot of mattresses. I sell a lot of mattresses. I get a lot of. Um, I get a lot of sexual questions when I sell mattresses. Kind of weird. But uh, one I get a lot is, um, does memory foam is that good for sex? You know, it's all right. What, what do you think? Well, what's it? Hey, it sucks. Does it bounce back? It doesn't bounce back. It helps for lack of dick. I will, uh, the finger spring helps for lack of dick. That's for sure. Because, I mean, yeah, you know, there's no bounce back. Like, you need a six pack for a memory foam. Food for thought. Anyways. Um, but, yeah, no, so people do ask me about that. And I always tell people, it's like, you know, it's kind of the same, but memory foam is definitely harder to clean up. Because, <laughs> because if you come inside of that, it's going to remember that shit forever. <laughs> that. So, got written up at HR for that one. Um, So we're in hard times right now. I do sell a lot of mattresses and stuff like that. It's part time. I'm trying to sell people a lot of like the sleep system. You know, I'm trying to get the good mattress, the adjustable base. Keep killing these motherfuckers up just do like a mattress on the on the fucking floor. A bunch of ratchets, man. So yeah. My point is, it's never been an easier time to get laid. All right, because those people fuck. That's a consensus there. Mattress on the floor, they fuck. It is for sure. 
Nothing be more disappointing if I like if I took a girl out on like an expensive date and we went back to her place and there was like a match on the floor. Now you're telling me I could just take it to Applebee's and I could have got one food? Because that, that's that's all that says. Mattress on the floor. I sold this girl a mattress on, on that mattress and I was just like, oh, okay, so you need like a box spring and frame. She's like, no, I'm gonna put on the floor. And I was just like, it's fucking disgusting. So I was like, you know what? I got a shot with you. So what are you doing later? She's like, I have a boyfriend. I was like, you sleep on the same elevation as a cockroach in your bed. Everyone's your boyfriend. All right, that's not the truth at all. Yeah, let's see, what else popped in the world? Um, I got tricked back into going back on Bumble. I was getting messages. I fucking hate Bumble though. You know, because like with Bumble, you the, the girls have to message you uh, first, right? But like Bumble will say, hey, you have a match. See what happens. I'm like, I can't do anything. So really that message is like, hey, look who's still not talking to you. <laughs> Fuck. You know, then my anxiety kicks in. And you only have, they only have 24 hours to respond. So then my anxiety kicks in, like, oh fuck, they still responded. Like six hours down the road, I'm just like looking through my phone, looking at photos, just like, please say words. Yeah. And then they just say hi at the end, you're like, oh, perfect, perfect. We gave you the power to build a foundation. Then they give you the hammer, like, here, you started. It's like, great. Yeah. That's all I really have. I don't know. Um, I, had, I just got a relationship recently. Got a relationship. Um, yeah, my ex, she was really into astrology. Into astrology. In fact, when she found out she was dating an asshole, she would go to a mechanic shop just so someone would say her wine was off. <laughs> <laughs> Less Rachel Green, more Gatorade for that bitch. All right, that's my time, guys. My name is Peter Arman. Thank you very much. Peter Arman! All right, on deck we have Scott Coburn, but coming up right now we have Bruce Detour. <laughs> Shadow of Finger right there, number one or number two? It, it, it's lights in my face. I don't know what you want, but two? All right, fantastic. Are you uh, getting excited for the 2024 election? Anybody getting excited? <laughs> no. What do you got? Yes or no? What do you think? 2024? Yes or no? What do you think? What do you think? Uh, that is the correct answer to that question. I, uh, I'm not looking forward to it myself. I, yeah, I've, I'm born and raised in Seattle, so I've lived here all my life. And uh, I think I'm pretty progressive. You know, I'm thinking of Mary. Marriage between two consenting adults have at it. You get a different pronoun, I don't care. Uh, you need an abortion, not my business. But when I go fill up my gas tank nowadays and I look at the gas prices, I am instantly a Republican. <laughs> Boom, this is outrageous. What the fuck is going on here? God, isn't there, a, isn't there a country in the Middle East we should be bombing? Like, I wouldn't mind sending $170 billion to Ukraine if they had some freaking oil. Come on. <sighs> I'm not looking forward to the election. In 1980, we elected Ronald Reagan, and at 69 years old, he was the oldest president we ever elected. And we ripped him up and down for that. And then in 2016, we elected Donald Trump. And I didn't realize at the time that he was older than Reagan. And you know, my entire life, all I've ever heard was that the Republican Party was the party of old white men. Old white men, goddamn old white men. So what did the Democratic Party do in 2020? They elected the oldest white man ever to serve as president. Yeah, it's like weekend at Biden over there, man. It's like, holy shit. And in 2024, it's going to be the two of them again. I don't know. Like, I'm worried about 2028. I mean, what are we going to do? Like, resurrect the rotting corpse of Strom Thurmond and just walk him around like a puppet? Fuck it. I'm not even going to vote. I don't think we should even vote anymore. Just, just sit them both at a fucking table. And whoever can finish a bowl of oatmeal first, you get the job. Have at it. I'll see you right now. I'll tell you. Uh... I'm gonna eat so much oatmeal. Some people might say I'd eat the most. I wouldn't say that, but other people, very fine people are saying that all over the place. I think I could eat more oatmeal. And I think he could. I think Trump would eat more oatmeal. In fact, I, fi I think he'd win, and I think he'd finish it up with like two Big Macs and a big ass Diet Coke. And I think that's what he'd do. And the whole time, Joe Biden would just be sitting there going, chocolate, chocolate chip. I mean, the guy's had two aneurysms and a facelift. You know, you know he's had a facelift? That's why he looks surprised all the time. That's why he looks like the kid from Deliverance's great great grandfather. Like, really? I'm just saying. I don't know. Not excited. Uh, 46 years old, single, never been married, no kids. 
Hashtag winning. <laughs> I can't have kids now, I missed my window. Uh, and I, it's for a medical condition, and I'm honest about it in all the bios on the dating sites. I put it right in the very first paragraph. And I actually recently got a message from a woman that said, I'm 42 years old, I'm looking to get married and have two children. What are you looking for? To which I responded, uh, apparently somebody who can read. <laughs> really, like just, yeah, that's all, that's all I'm looking for, no big deal. But I'm working hard on bettering myself so I can be attractive to the uh, opposite sex. And I decided on January 1st, that I was gonna stop drinking. I, was gonna, I wanted to see how long I could go without drinking alcohol or masturbating. Yeah. I made it till 12.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> Which doesn't sound too bad until you consider that I didn't wake up until 11.15. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you which one I, I'm not gonna tell you which one I failed at, but I will tell you this. I really, really want a beer right now. <laughs> That's what you do. You try to make yourself better at the beginning of the year. Like I've lost about 40 pounds since January. Yeah, thank you one person who, who doesn't feel the need to body shame me. Okay, um, you know, and it, the hard part right now is it's still the diet. It's all the things that I can't eat. Like, I'm getting to the point where like, I don't even watch porn anymore. I just download restaurant menus. <laughs> I put blood on it? Oh my God, I'm glad I live in the time of fast internet. Can you imagine like when I was a younger kid, they had 14, 14 4 modems to wait, and like, oh, come on, come on, come on. What is that, it's like calamari, is that a cheese stick? What the fuck am I looking at? <laughs> well, you know what you're looking at. My name's Brucey Tor. You can find me on the Instagrams, the Facebooks, and if you really want, I'll be the creepy guy selling t-shirts out of the trunk of my car. Thank you very much, Seth That was Bruce Tor. he made a strong Thurman reference. Yeah! All right, on deck we have Joseph Knight, but coming up right now we have the very funny Scott Coburn! turn you straight pussy, that's absolutely true. She's a 60 year old woman, but she fucks like a 24 year old woman. I know because she, she like vapes the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> my, wife, my wife still calls me a dilf. Isn't that cool? I, I believe that means dad you'd like to frustrate, but I, I'm not 100% sure because you know how old white people just can't understand acronyms. Um, I know you're probably thinking, you know, two 60-year-olds having sex is pretty disgusting, but I can assure you that the way we do it, it, it totally is. <laughs> it is. The shit that comes out of this woman's mouth, oh my god. It's like, how do I put this? A, a, a possessed person who's also in a mental institution who also has Tourette's. I mean, how many times can you say, fuck me, God, fuck me, God, fuck me, God, before God actually comes down and does it? It's like, oh, man, I'm looking up. Is, is lightning going to strike me? Nope. God just taps me on the shoulder. Move over, buddy. I got this. Being cocked by God. Ugh. What do you do? 
nothing. Um, turns out God is, is uncircumcised, so she wasn't into it. I lucked out. Um, any of you into role playing? Woo. Yep. Thanks. Uh, we love role playing. We play. Uh, we play successful comedian and comedy groupie. That's so awesome. That's so cool. I mean, we really want to get away from reality, right? I mean, but it's having your ego stroked and your cock soaked at the same time. Man, you come so good. Um, I'll leave you with this. Um, any of you have pets out there? Dogs? Dog people? Yeah. I, I, I love my dog. I realize my wife has two dogs. I mean, she has the dog we share, but then she also has me. I mean, she, she picks up after me. She feeds me. And we both get to lick peanut butter off her body. <laughs> my wife, my wife fucking hates that joke. She's like, God damn it, I told you, I trained the dog not to need peanut butter anymore. I've been Scott Coburn, thank you very much. Let's give it up for Scott Coburn. His wife is so supportive, she's here that he can look at her and say the shit that comes out of her mouth. Let's give it up for his wife. All right, on deck we have Al Alan, 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 Sabolik. And we're coming up right now, we have Joseph Knight. Right. Yeah, so I'm a guy with long hair, and I live in Seattle where every woman has shorter hair than me, <laughs> and a bigger dick. It's pretty hot. Big dick energy in a woman's pretty hot. But yeah, the older I get, the more I'm worried that my long hair is like my only achievement in life. I'm getting anxious to cut it. I can only imagine how strong my neck is going to be. Been doing all these reps. I don't know. Seattle's a pretty political town that we live in. You know, that Seattle uh, recently became the first U.S. city to outlaw discrimination based on caste. You know, which I agree with. Just because you broke your leg or arm, you still have rights, man. Uh, I, I was shopping for toilet paper the other day, and uh, it said, you know, soft and strong. Okay, cool, yeah, that makes sense. But then they had another one that said, extra strong. I mean, what are you getting into? <laughs> I don't know, however you put it, toilet paper's never gonna be load-bearing. I, I didn't realize strength was an attribute we needed in toilet paper. Like, do we need the Arnold Schwarzenegger of toilet paper? Get to the poop. I don't know, but it's kind of admirable. You know, as a guy, I think I aspire to be soft and strong, just like toilet paper. I also like to lick ass, so. <laughs> I let them go first, I mean. Yeah, so AI is big in the news lately, and everyone's worried about AI taking over the world, and, uh, you know, I think we're really in a predicament because we can't stop ourselves. Like, we know AI is gonna end the world, but we were also promised sex robots. So, I, it's like we wanna, we wanna stop AI, but we also wanna get laid. And we think it'll all be okay if we all just, you know, get laid. Um, yeah, so I, I asked uh, AI, uh, you know, tell a joke about yourself. And it said, oh, you know, everyone's scared of AI taking over the world, but at least you won't have to do your laundry, right? And that's the exact same premise of my joke. You know, except mine is sex and theirs is laundry. You know, either way, those gonna be loads at the end of the world. I don't know, the end is coming. It's a promise. Uh, I, I like words that are similar, you know, like artesian and artisan. Like one is from an artist and one is a fresh water source. You know, like if anyone tries to sell me an artisan leather jacket or something, I'm always like, an artesian leather jacket would be way cooler. <laughs> or, or like circumference and circumstance. I always find myself in difficult circumferences. What's the circumstance of a basketball? I don't know, and then what's up with jars, right? That, that's like a circumstance about a circumference. I don't know, trying to get that lid off. How many times do I have to turn that thing around? I don't know, it's, am I turning the Indianapolis 500 or trying to get a pickle here? <laughs> I, I wanted to eat a pickle, not be in a pickle. Uh, do you think bottles 
Like, or do you think jars are jealous of bottles? It's like a jar looks at a bottle and it's like, if I just worked out, you know, I could, <laughs> I could do that today. And they both have the lids, you know. I, I think uh, glasses of water, there's just no containment. They're just out there free, living their best life. I have sexual tension with glasses of water. It's like, will he, won't he drink me? You're gonna fill me back up, I know you're thirsty. Uh, sexual tension with a glass of water. Also surface tension with a glass of water. <laughs> Stupid joke. Uh, my name's Joseph Knight. Uh, I host a, another open mic at Woodski's on Tuesday nights at 7.30 down here in Fremont. You can find me at josephknightcomedy.com. Uh, compose your dildos, everybody. Do your part while doing your part. Uh, thanks so much. <laughs> Let's give it up for Joseph Knight. Check out his open mic tomorrow night at Woodski's. On deck, we have our featured Brandon White, but coming up right now, we have Alan Sofolic. Alan, there we go. Woo! Thank you. And that was the first joke of my set is my name. Uh, Alan Sobolik is my name, but you wouldn't be able to tell based on the way it's spelled. Um, so I heard, I, I was listening to a podcast uh, the other day, and they got on the topic of if you've ever, like, accidentally killed someone and you don't know about it. Say, for example, you, you eat peanut butter, uh, you shake hands with someone that has a very terrible peanut allergy, and you go on with the rest of your day, you don't even know this person, and then next thing you know, they're like in anaphylactic shock, and they die. Like, how would you know about that? Um, so then I thought, let's take it a step further, and what are certain ways where maybe you commit uh, a murder or something, but it's at a smaller scale that you wouldn't really think about. So I heard earlier, we got some pet owners here, we got some dog owners. Um, anybody here have to deal with fleas? Fleas at all? Yeah. yeah. You ever set off a bug bomb? Yeah. Congratulations, you just killed hundreds, if not thousands, of living creatures on this planet. And then the question is, do you feel bad? No. You don't feel bad. You kind of feel bad? Okay. So now, the topic that I'm coming to is spiders. Who here is afraid of spiders? No way. No, no way, but I saw it a hand. So we got a lot of people that are afraid of spiders, um, including my mother. She is deathly afraid. Um, and I've been trained at a very young age to be the dispatcher. So anytime I heard, ah! that, mean, that meant it was time to go. I just grab a, a tissue, splat, over and done with it. And I've been doing this for decades. And I start thinking, I'm racking up a pretty big body count. To the point where I might be like a spider serial killer. And there's a couple of rules to being a serial killer for spiders. If they're outside, that's fine. That's where they belong. If they walk into my house, game on. So, I actually developed a few different ways of uh, taking care of this problem, uh, which is a good thing and maybe a bad thing. So there was, sometimes uh, I lived in Bellingham and I uh, was living in the attic of this building. And there was one day, there was this giant wolf spider, like one that has got like the, the leg span of your palm, like big motherfucker. And you know, you can take like, just a paper towel or something, but that's a big one. You don't want to mess with that. So I grabbed just a little, uh, a little bowl, captured it, then I filled it with water and uh, dish soap. So I essentially drowned it and then squashed it for good measure, just to play safe. And then I realized that's kind of like spider Guantanamo or something, like I'm just drowning this fucker. Uh, and I'm just getting really worried because now I'm getting to the spot where I'm just taking a spider and like ripping out legs so it only has three legs. And then I put it in a, like in a little box with a fly with no wings and I just wanna see what happens. I might have a problem. 
but I don't know. Um, I also put uh, a little blade on top of the fly's head, so it's going to be like a gladiator battle. And I just want to see which one is able to actually do what first. I'm also not a comedian, so if you didn't laugh at that, I don't blame you. Thank you. That was Alex Bullitt. You are a comedian. All right. Our feature. Let's give a warm welcome to Brandon White. What is up? How are we? I've been a lot of uh, long-haired men on this show. Just dudes. <laughs> I don't know how none of y'all didn't take advantage of that. There was some, there's some nice air blowing up here. And you, you all noticed it, right? You saw Fabio up here not fucking around with that shit. That was dying in the back, and he had no clue. He had no idea. All he had to do was stand here for his whole set and just wave his mouthless hair. He had no idea. The poor guy. I took a bunch of pictures, so he'll he'll know later. I've already tagged him on the Instagram post, so he's he's gonna. I thought that was fucking funny. <laughs> I've been trying to take care of my dog better lately, so like I'm paying attention to weird things, and I saw this commercial that said that my dog was like a wolf. And it turns out that they were just trying to sell me dog food, but I took that real seriously. Except for like, my dog's a Chewini. He is like the two least wolf dogs put into one dog. And it, it was just thought it was stupid that they said he was a wolf. He's, he's not. I've never seen a wolf eat its own shit. I've seen AJ do that. I've never seen a wolf do that on the National Geographic. I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I kind of wanted him to start eating more like a wolf, though. Like, I think he should be like that with his brethren. So I went out and I got him a whole ass deer. Just a live ass deer that he's got to kill and hunt and shit like that, like a wolf would do. He's not good at it, you guys. He has not killed this deer yet. It is way too big for him. He doesn't know what to do with it. It has ruined our house. It has fucking ruined our entire house because AJ's an inside dog. Uh, but, uh,. Did you guys know that if you go into the forest, you can just go get a whole ass deer for free? You can just go get them, they have them out there. You just show up there, you just rope it, you gotta get it in your car. I ruined my car, too, is what I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to get this dog a fucking meal. He, he didn't even try to kill it, he just became friends with it, and now he rides the deer around everywhere. It's fucking stupid. He's triumphant, which probably makes him like the alpha wolf. Like, that makes a lot of sense to me now. He was a wolf the whole time. Should have named him Balto. Mm, too young of a crowd, we don't get the Balto <laughs> reference, that's okay. We are too young for Balto, and some of us are for Balto. Mike cut out, I said old for Balto. I just made a old guy joke, I'm sorry. Sorry for the olds in here. Um, I was going down the freeway the other day, and there was a little digital sign that said the speed limit, and it said 50, speed 50, smiley face. And I thought that was nice. But I was doing 73 miles an hour. <laughs> And when I passed it, it showed me that I was doing 73 miles an hour, and the happy face turned to a sad face. And it fucking worked, you guys. I slowed way the hell down. This stupid sign made me feel feelings. And I just decided to make a life decision at that point when the sign got mad at me. Can't tell my dad I love him, but I'll listen to a sign, right? That's... I can't tell my dad I love him because he's dead. That's why, that's why you can't. Oh no, we got seven that one. <laughs> it's okay, my mom's dead too. It's okay, it's okay. Does that make you feel bad for me? No. Oh, well then fuck you, I'm not gonna do the rest of the joke because it ain't gonna work now. You're supposed to feel bad for me. You know, it's bad enough to fuck me, like, maybe. <laughs> I'm glad you said that so I could do the rest of the joke. I'm, I know that it doesn't work now. That's the one we can take off the list. Um, what are we talking about? We're talking about my dumb dog, Speed Signs. I want to open a restaurant and I want to call it the New Spaghetti Factory. It's like with the old Spaghetti Factory. You can tell me what I'm doing wrong all the time. It just sounds like a lot of fun. You know, like old Spaghetti Factory will call me up and be like, why are you always on your phone, New Spaghetti Factory? I'll be like, you fucking called me, bro. You can't. Complain at me when you made me do the thing you're complaining about. 
be like, we used to drink out of the hose, and it's like, yeah, now we all have autism, so whose fault is that, Old Spaghetti Factory? <laughs> we didn't like the autism joke in Seattle. They laugh at that more in Tacoma, I just want you guys to know that. I think it means less to them. <laughs> um, what kind of jokes do I want to do for you guys? What kind of, what kind of jokes do we want? Just like funny ones, I should try that eventually. <laughs> should attempt to do funny jokes, I heard. <laughs> I, uh, what's a, new, what's a good new one I've been doing? I, I can tell you a story about a guy I used to get high with. It was super fun. He, uh, his name was Brendan, and he looked kind of like me, but he had like a Lord Farquaad haircut. He was a really interesting looking dude. Yeah, he's super into drugs, and he was a lot of fun. Sometimes when we would get high, he would sit in the back seat in the middle by himself. He didn't. He would choose to sit in the middle. That's how fucking weird he was. And sometimes he would sit in the back and he would do what he would call playing statue, where he would just stay as still as he could for as long as he could until we noticed him. That was the whole game. He would just sit in the back in the middle like a fucking psychopath, just looking like this. Big Farquaad ass haircut, just looking like a statue. One time we went to a place and did some sketchy things and we thought we had dropped him off at his house beforehand. We got done going to do the sketchy things and we were like, hey man, we should go get Brendan again. And he was like, I'm right here. Just fucking playing statue the whole time. And we were so high we didn't know he was there. One time I took one mushroom, just one single mushroom, and I went to go have a fantastic day, and it was way stronger than I thought it was. And I was walking down the street, and I kept looking at this dude, and I thought he was really tall. I kept saying to myself, that guy is so fucking tall. Oh my God, that guy is so fucking tall. But I didn't realize I was saying it out loud. <laughs> and the people who were with me were like, Brandon, that guy's six foot tall. He is not that fucking tall. <laughs> it was fucking stupid. We went around like we were sitting at like this little bar thing later, and there was a building in the distance, and somebody had gotten on the roof of the building, and I was just watching them, uh, and I couldn't figure out if it was a mushroom thing or a real thing, so I didn't say anything. And then like ten minutes went by, and one of my buddies was like, "There's a dude on the roof over there," and I was like, "Oh, thank God, he's real. Thank God." Didn't expect that mushroom to be that strong. The weird part of that day is though they went and did something else and left me alone because they were my real friends. Um, and then they ran into a dude who was seven feet tall. They told me that later, and I was like, it's all a dream still. Am I still on the mushroom? I have no clue. This trip has stopped. Somebody asked me, the, I just shift. Sometimes I just go into different jokes. If they don't work at the end, I just shift, and then you, you, she, she picked up on it. She's, she's, she's fucking on her head. She's like, wait, you don't need to explain. <laughs> I was asked the other day if a hot dog was considered a sandwich, and I say that's not a question you can answer. It's along the same lines of like, what is God or what happens to you when you die? Like you just can't answer that question. Too, too much of a juxtaposition? Do we know the word juxtaposition? <laughs> All right, let's do a real bit now. I, uh, I got an Amber Alert the other day. You guys know what the Amber Alert is, right? kids get kidnapped, everybody in the state gets a text about it. And I think that's cool. Like, I don't think it's cool. I think it's like a good idea. Because when I was a kid, nobody knew you got kidnapped till you figured that shit out. You were just in the back of the van and you were like, why are there no windows in here? That guy did not hand me any candy at all. This, ah, damn it, I'm getting kidnapped. And you just realize it. You'd go home to your parents. You'd be like, I think I got kidnapped. And then you would get in trouble, fucking stupid. They'd be like, why'd you do that? You'd just be like, I don't know, I don't have any idea. I didn't know why I wasn't supposed to get kidnapped. Nobody taught me that. I didn't pay attention at that assembly. Well, we are a young crowd. We don't have assemblies anymore. We don't have any assemblies in school. You just have to sit on the floor in the gym. Trust me, as a little fat kid, that was not fun. I was sitting on the floor, on the gym. My legs fell asleep, and I didn't learn any of the things we were supposed to learn at the assemblies. I was just out there getting kidnapped, and I do all the drugs. It's just how I live my life now. But like, I asked my mom when I was 15 or 16, I was like, weren't you afraid that I would get kidnapped as a little kid? Because she used to like let me walk around a lot by myself, like probably more than a little kid should have been walking around. And she goes, no, Brandon, nobody kidnaps little fat kids. <laughs> it's 
No, don't call me. It's fucking true. You've never seen a little fat kid on an Amber Alert. Fuck off. Never seen that shit. Here's a rule of thumb with kidnapping kids. If they're too wide to fit on the milk carton, they're not going on the milk carton. Okay? The fat kids are going on the chocolate milk carton. It just makes more sense, right? It just makes sense. Camera guy like that one. That's good. <laughs> But like, I didn't think it was like, I, like people didn't want to kidnap me, you know what I mean? Like, I was adorable. I was fat, but I was fucking adorable. It's just, if you're gonna be kidnapping fat kids, you gotta be strong. You gotta lift that kid properly into your van. You gotta use your knees when you're lifting that fat kid. You cannot use your back. Could you imagine going to your chiropractor and being like, so I was kidnapping this fat kid and I fucked on my back. I'm gonna be suspicious of you kidnapping fat kids. It's gonna be, it's gonna be mad. I don't think you could kidnap a fat kid nowadays because food prices are just ridiculous. I mean, they're ridiculously high right now. That in between, like that and gas prices, Jesus, who wants to drive a van right now, right? <laughs> Never done that part of that joke. That was pretty fucking funny. Oh, I'm going to keep that one for later. I, uh, <laughs> I'm tired of the gas prices, though. It's the truth. I'm just. I'm out here wondering when people are going to start sucking dick for gas. No takers? Okay, that's fine. Um, could have gone to the shell. I mean, just saying. The shell. Good gas? Huh? No? Okay. Okay. Everybody's got to try. I hope they start sucking dick for gas soon, though, because gas is getting fucking expensive. And I'm at the point where I can't really afford it anymore. So, same deal. I'll meet you at the shell. Like, just switched. A little switched. It's the second half of this joke, but I can't remember it right now. Sorry. Um, no, it's about fentanyl. That's why. That's because I did too much of that on the street before I came out here. You guys, you guys can laugh at fentanyl jokes. We know it's here. We know it's here. You guys remember when all those billionaires went to space and everybody got super mad at them? Everybody got mad at Jeff Bezos because his rocket was shaped like a dick? You guys remember that? Do we all work for Jeff Bezos? Is that why we're concerned? We, we know he's hearing us right now. He's heard this joke. I put it on his platforms before. He already knows. But like everybody got mad at him because his, his rocket was shaped too much like a dick and it made me think like all rockets are kind of shaped like dicks. When you think about it, every single rocket that has ever been shot kind of looks like a dick. If you want to go to space, you got to go on a dick rocket. You can't go on a pussy rocket because they don't make pussy rockets yet, okay? I'm waiting for them to make pussy rockets because I'm fairly certain they're going to be more efficient and they're going to get us there quicker, right? It just makes more sense. Any of you new comics in the room, that's how I get every single female type person onto my side. I tell that joke about pussy rockets being better. I also just like saying pussy rocket a few times. Like, that's just a good, it's a pussy rocket. You can't do that when you're fucking somebody. It sounds weird. I don't like it. Oh, we didn't like, okay. I didn't like that tag, that's fine. How much time I got now? Uh, two minutes. Went. Two minutes? Okay. I heard about kidnapping. I talked about signs. My dead dad and mom, thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> uh, what's the last one I want to do? What is the last one I want to do? Coming up blank. I guess I'll do the, the last one. And I'll do... This is what happens sometimes, guys. You ever just smoke weed before you go do something important? And then you fuck up with two minutes left? Like you did okay most of the time? Like 13 minutes you were okay? And your last fucking two minutes? I don't mind being a big man. I don't mind it. Like, it's not the worst thing in the world unless you gotta breathe while laying down. That kind of sucks. It's like, I don't think I have sleep apnea. I think I just got regular apnea, you know what I mean? Okay, we don't like this fat joke. I'm not gonna continue with three more minutes of fat jokes if we didn't like the first one. Uh, the LGBTQ, oh, we got your attention now. The LGBTQ plus community recently added a number. Did you guys know that? It's a two, it's for queer indigenous peoples, it's for two-spirit peoples. LGBTQ plus two, it's the perfect password. Yeah. Yeah. If your password is LGBTQ and I just outed that shit, I'm very sorry. I didn't mean to do that to you. You should probably change it. 
If you're LGBTQ plus two and you're in the closet, you could just put a question mark on there. Like LGBTQ plus two, we don't know yet, and that's okay. You can you can find out who you are. LGBTQ plus two underscore. That's a bottom. Yeah, this one always takes people a second. It's the underscore. It's underneath. <laughs> Yeah, we like that one better than what I was going to do. Thank you guys so much. I'm going to get out of here. That was Brandon White.